Hello boys and girls, it's Olli here. I thought I'd make this quick tutorial on how to use 3D Gaussian splatting models created with PostShot and how to bring them out in After Effects. And since there doesn't seem to be any concrete step-by-step -step documentation on this topic anywhere, I thought it could be useful to go through this simple process and show how it's done. So let's get started. When you have downloaded the PostShot program from the JavaSets homepage and start installing it, you will notice that in the first step of the process there is an option where you can decide do you want to install the PostShot plugin into your After Effects at the same time as the main application is installed. So the installation is very easy. After that, you can either create a Gaussian splitting model with PostShot or open the model you have made earlier. But also note that, that if you want to open a PLY file in After Effects, you need to recycle it through the PostShot. Because the key is that you need to save your 3D model in PostShot's own native format, which is a dot PSHT file. Now you can launch your After Effects. In the beginning, create a new project and then make a new comp in there. The first thing I usually do is create a new solid layer. It can be any color you want, it doesn't matter. Because of this layer, we are now looking for the post effect. And it can be easily found by typing post shot in the effect search field here. Or another option is to search it from the drop down menu behind the chosen category. There you will find the post shot effect. And now we can quickly go through the setting options that this effect can offer. First, you have the app button from which you can conveniently launch the main program if you need to modify your Radiance model. The second button is perhaps the most important because through that we now open the particular PSHT file and link it here to After Effects. It takes a little while when the Gaussian splatting model opens into viewport. After that, it's good to create a camera layer through which you can then view your model from different angles. I also often create a 3D null object here to which I then link the camera. In this way, it is easier to move the camera inside the large 3D model and look for a good angle. Using the same method, you can also create another null object and link it to your Gaussian splatting model via the post shot effects scene transform function. 3D null object can therefore be used for moving, rotating, or scaling the model itself. And in the same way, it can also be used as a crop tool for the model when we choose to use the null object from the crop box drop down menu. Now, by scaling or moving the null object, we can crop and show parts of the Gaussian model. And since null objects are easy to animate, we can create cool looking revealing animation by using this crop box linking. Next, we have the splat scale parameter, and by adjusting this, we can change the size of the splats. This is also an animatable value with which we can nicely represent the splat structure and reveal the point cloud. Then, we also have a max opacity setting, and I think this is a very interesting value because through this, you can adjust the transparency of the splats. This is exactly the parameter that allows you to create the coast wall effect, which I have used in some of my previous videos. By using this control, you can nicely see through the structures and create a kind of an X-ray vision. 
In my opinion, this is a very cool looking effect, but when adjusting the values, you should notice that they don't have a linear effect. The actual transparency starts to show up only in very low readings. By combining scaling value and opacity, you can achieve a very soft and glowing looking effect. That works great if you want to present and play with transparent things. In addition to this, the post-shot effect now also has a Z-Zep channel. This black and white channel helps you to utilize the depth value found in your 3D model. With the maximum depth slider, you can search for suitable distance. Even here, it is worth remembering that since the C-Depth channel is often used for masking, the most useful values are found in very low readings, where we can clearly only have black and white tones, and very few gray values. So by using this function, we can bring other 3D objects into After Effects, and embed them in the Gaussian splatting model. But the depth data can also be used to achieve the camera depth of field effect. It means that we can focus points from the 3D model and set other areas out of focus by blurring them using a separate camera effect indented for this purpose. For make this really work we often also need the exposure effect to boost the border between black and white so that we can get a decent mask that separates the foreground and the background. But the purpose of this tutorial is not to go into the details by demonstrating how to use the see that channel. There are other excellent tutorials for that. For example, Video Copilot has several good tutorials on this topic. And even though they are already quite old, they have stood the test of time remarkably well and remain highly functional. As I watch these iconic tutorials by Andrew Kramer, I am struck by how quickly time has flown. Although these examples were created over a decade ago, they remain relevant even as the software and techniques has rapidly advanced since those days. In any case, I'll put the links of them here in the description of this video, and you can use them when you want to go deeper into the use of the depth channel. Well, here it was. By using the post effect by duplicating layers and combining its properties, you have a lot of possibilities to build fascinating animations and present a Gaussian point cloud in a new way. Just feel free to do different tests and experiments with it. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you liked my video, hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I will continue looking through the structures and looking for new 3D tools. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.